It's a deal that's expected to further muddy the waters in the eastern Mediterranean. The Turkish and Libyan governments have signed an agreement for energy exploration, but some are against it. So what will this mean for regional stability? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Diplomatic tensions are rising once again in the eastern Mediterranean, sparked by a dispute about oil and gas rights. Libya and Turkey signed a preliminary deal on energy exploration on Monday. Well, that sparked angry reactions from Greece, Cyprus and Egypt. And Libya's rival eastern-based parliament also rejected the deal. We'll bring in our guests in a moment, but first, this from Malik Trainer in Tripoli. A senior Turkish delegation visits Tripoli to discuss trade, defense, and energy, and signs a deal with the internationally recognized government to cooperate in exploring and drilling for oil and gas. It's vital to confirm the importance of the agreement that was signed today, the Memorandum of Understanding concerning oil, energy and gas, especially in the shadow of the Ukrainian crisis and its international economic repercussions on the world. Libya has Africa's largest reserves of crude oil, but years of conflict and political divisions have devastated production. An oil blockade by eastern forces launched in April led to production slumping to 200,000 barrels a day. The country now produces 1.2 million barrels daily, but wants to do more. The Turks say they can help. The hydrocarbon agreement aims to reach a win-win situation for both sides, on land and at sea, for research, drilling for both Turkish and Libyan companies. But the memorandum signed on Monday has angered some and reignited disputes over a maritime agreement signed by Turkey and Libya in 2019. That deal created an exclusive economic zone in contested waters in the eastern Mediterranean. Both Greece and Egypt say the internationally recognized government in Tripoli does not have the authority to conclude international agreements. But some political analysts disagree. This is a matter between Turkey and Libya, and uh, Egypt has no right of interfering or commenting on that. Uh, I think it's proper for Egypt to stop interfering in Libyan affairs and keep to its own business. Details of the deal between Libya and Turkey have not been published. The EU has called for further clarification, saying such actions could undermine regional stability. And with tensions already rising, Many in the eastern Mediterranean are feeling concerned. Maltrena, Al Jazeera, Tripoli. Well, analysts are warning the latest deal could worsen tensions in the eastern Mediterranean region. Let's take a look. As Malik mentioned in his report, Turkey and Libya signed an agreement back in 2019 establishing what they call exclusive, uh, an exclusive economic zone in the Mediterranean. Now, Greece condemned this, saying the zone overlapped with its own maritime waters. Turkey was also drilling in the waters around Cyprus at the time, which resulted in sanctions from the European Union. Ankara controls the northern half of the Cypriot island. Well, nine months later, in a rebuke of the Turkish-Libyan agreement, Greece signed its own deal with Egypt, outlining their maritime borders. So let's bring in our guests now. In Tripoli, we have Salah El Bakush, a political analyst and a former senior advisor to the negotiating team of the High Council of State. That's an advisory body to the Libyan government. Joining us from Athens, George Sogopoulos, lecturer at Democritus University of Thrace. And in Istanbul, Matthew Breiser, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and a former U.S. ambassador to Azerbaijan. A warm welcome to all of you. Um, Salah, if I could start with you, what does this agreement mean then for Libya? Well, I, I, I suppose uh, what we can say it uh, builds on the previous agreement signed in 2019 at the height of the uh, war in Tripoli uh, that was supported by uh, the Egyptians 
so, uh, but we can't uh, tell exactly what the details are. And just like the European Union's statement, uh, further details on the agreement uh, are needed before one can comment on it uh, with precision. Uh, but I think it's a matter between Turkey and Libya. And the others, if they want to uh, participate, we can sit at the table and negotiate. Uh, the Egyptians and the Greeks uh, signed their own agreement without consulting with anybody. And uh, so, uh, so did the uh, Turks and the Libyans. Everybody needs to sit down and negotiate around this uh, uh, issue. Matthew Breiser, the Turkish foreign minister says this is a win-win deal for both countries. Is it? Well, it certainly is. I mean, for Libya, uh, Libya is going to get assistance from Turkey in uh, developing its oil and gas sector offshore and exploring offshore. I mean, Libya is already a powerhouse when it comes to oil and gas production onshore. Uh, for Turkey, it's it's a win as well because it is a way that Turkey is uh, returning to an aggressive foreign policy in the, in the Mediterranean or in the eastern Mediterranean. Uh, trying to take advantage of the exclusive economic zone uh, agreement it reached with the government of National Accord of Libya back in 2019, but in a way that is, I think, from Ankara's perspective, a little bit less confrontational than in the summer of 2020, when Turkey uh, accompanied an oil and gas exploration ship with naval vessels that ended up getting into a, a minor collision with a Greek Navy vessel, after which the, the tensions de-escalated. So, so, yeah, I think from Ankara's perspective, it's, it's a win as well. George Sigopoulos, the, the Greek government has already raised its objections to this deal. What, what is that based on? Well, we do not know that much about the recent agreement, but we know a lot about the agreement of 2019. That is uh, considered illegal by both Greece and the European Union because it infringes upon the sovereign rights and the interests of other states. And this is a reality that we need to take uh, into account. And uh, even if we are not experts on international law and the law of the sea, if we are looking at the map, we can see that this Libyan-Turkish agreement deprives Greek islands and big islands, for example, Crete and Rhodes, from the right to a continental shelf. This is a problem, uh, and therefore the, this agreement should be considered null and void, not only from a Greek, but also from a European perspective. Uh, Salah, there is, um, um, I mean, I know you, you touched on this earlier about the objections that, that Greece and, and Egypt and and Cyprus have to this uh, particular deal, and, and, and something needs to be worked out there. But there is a sense that this, this deal will, will add to the already ongoing tensions in the region, particularly with the fact that um, uh, the, 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 there is um, uh, Libya is not a completely stable country as well, uh, given the situation in, in the east of the country. What do you say to that? No, uh, well, well, what we say with, uh, to that is that you can, nobody can uh, take uh, the instability of Libya or the uh, tough times that Libya is going through now as an excuse to do whatever they want and prevent Libya from doing what it needs to do. Who's, who's mean, doing the, whatever they want? Just because Greece... Uh, obje well, the, uh, the, the Greeks and the Egyptians are doing that in the Eastern Mediterranean with the help of the Israelis. And they are uh, cooperating, signing agreements, and uh, thinking about building pipelines and so on. Uh, and uh, they are uh, excluding everybody else. So uh, uh, Libya cannot sit and watch. And just because the Greeks and the European Union objected and they think it's illegal, that doesn't make it so. I mean, uh, the Europeans and the, and the Greeks complained about a lot of stuff that's uh, uh, turned out to be uh, legal and okay. So uh, here, is, here is what, I, what I'm saying. Libya is a sovereign country last time I checked. It's a member of the United Nations and it's a member of the Arab League and it's a, a sovereign state. It can do uh, what it needs to do. It has a government that's recognized internationally. It's recognized by Greece. It's recognized by the European Union. So the only thing that Greece and the European Union and the Egyptians can do is to sit together with the Libyans and the Turks and try to work this thing out. I mean, the, 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 the laws of the high seas and so on, these are not set in stone, and there are a lot 
of interpretations so they can sit together and talk about it. But trying to uh, take advantage of Libya's uh, problems and impose on it uh, uh, their views is not correct. George, what do you say to that? Is there, is there a basis here for, for some sort of compromise? Uh, as things are developing, there is uh, uh, no uh, hope for a breakthrough, for a start of, of negotiations. And actually, the, the, the continental shelf is a right that exists ipso facto and ab initio, and this needs to be uh, taken into account. If we are looking at the responses uh, by major European capitals following the recent agreements, Berlin today, for example, what we say is that third parties are suggesting that uh, this agreement can produce no uh, legal results for third parties. Because, again, if our viewers are looking at the map, then it is a little bit bizarre and anomalous to talk about an agreement that does not take into account that the islands have the right to a continental self. Obviously, we are all hopeful for a dialogue where solution could be found. But taking into account that this agreement completely ignores international law and the law of the sea, then it is impossible even to hope about bringing the different parties to the negotiations table. This is the problem that exists right now. Matthew Breiser, as a former U.S. ambassador yourself, uh, I'm sure you can see that the United States, uh, for its part, has an interest in, in seeing all of these parties come to some sort of uh, agreement on this, given that they're on both sides, uh, there are NATO allies. So I guess my question is, do you fear that this could add to tensions in the region? Yeah, tensions are already quite high between Turkey and Greece, with each side accusing the other of also violations of international law and good neighborly relations. You know, I I, I dealt with the Cyprus question um, very actively, and the Cyprus question is very much kind of at the core of this current dispute. I also was tr trying to help negotiate agreement between Turkey and Greece about the questions George, our friend in Athens, is talking about continental shells and islands and how long should they be and you know how wide should they be, how many miles and. Turkey has maintained a position that uh, islands are not entitled to a continental shelf. Most other countries believe islands are entitled to a continental shelf. What the United States government had tried to do uh, was try to come up with, just as our friend in Libya is saying, uh, an, an agreement based on the law of the sea, which Turkey, by the way, has never joined. It's never joined the Convention on the Law of the Sea, neither has the United States. Uh, but in the law of the sea, there is a provision that says uh, when two states you know, that are on a coastline, a sea coastline, so littoral states, um, if they're neighbors, inevitably they're going to have conflicts of view on how far exclusive economic zones and territorial seas extend. And they need to sit down at the negotiating table and come up with an agreement that takes both sides' uh, interests, vital interests, into account. And that, as we're hearing from our friend in Libya, that is not happening. That needs to happen. So what happened in this case was Turkey, I think, got angry. Uh, because the United States lifted its uh, arms embargo on, on the Greek Cypriots, uh, and Turkey has taken a counter step now to say, okay, if you want to make a move on Cyprus, United States, well, we're going to make a move with Libya uh, that will block a pipeline that we heard about before, uh, or ostensibly could block a pipeline from Israel to Cyprus, uh, to Egypt and onward to Crete and mainland Greece. So we're in a tit for tat situation right now. And I know the United States would much prefer there to be negotiations. Is that how you see it, uh, Salah, that this could just could continue to develop into a, a tit for tat situation, as, as, as Matthew was saying there? Well, uh, certainly what Matthew is saying, uh, we have a potential for that, uh, uh, an extended conflict, and nobody wants to talk to each other. But uh, uh, as uh, uh, our friend from uh, Athens is saying, I mean, he's uh, basically suggesting that let's scrap the Turkish-Libyan agreement and then we can uh, sit, da sit down, uh, a precondition. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Middle East Monitor reporting, uh, quoting uh, uh, a Greek official saying that no drilling south of Crete. Well, uh, I mean, south of Crete there is Libya. It has territorial waters, it has an economic zone too. So I, I think everybody should, should look into this as an opportunity to sit together and work something out. We're all uh, neighbors in the Mediterranean, and we, uh, we need to uh, uh, take care of our uh, own interests, but also to take into consideration the interests of our neighbors. That's the way to do it, but uh, conditions and taking advantage of Libya's 
present situation as Greece and Egypt are trying to do is a non-negotiable thing. Greece made the mistake in 2019 of kicking the Libyan ambassador, giving him 48 hours to leave the country. Well, unfortunately, that ambassador is now the president of Libya. So, uh, so things c could go wrong, uh, but uh, I hope uh, uh, cooler heads will uh, prevail. Uh, George, if, if, the, if Turkey goes ahead with this and, and starts drilling uh, in these areas, how do you expect the, the Greek government will react? How do, what do you think they will do? Well, this depends where Turkey will start its drilling operations. So the real problem right now in the Eastern Mediterranean is that we do have zones that overlap, they intersect. So if Turkey uh, plans to drill in zones of the Greek-Egyptian uh, memorandum of understanding of delimitation of maritime zones, then there will be a serious problem. And Greece has shown in the past that it is prepared to defend its sovereign rights. The same happened in 2020. However, there is always an opportunity for, uh, for a dialogue despite the problems. There are ideas. For example, the European Union has proposed an EU-led uh, uh, multilateral dialogue for the future of the Eastern Mediterranean. There are exploratory talks between Greece and Turkey which are ongoing. Greece recognizes the delimitation of maritime zones of the continental shelf as the sole difference between the two that needs to be settled. The real problem right now is that Turkey threatens Greece with the uses of military force. And that's why I'm not optimistic for dialogue to resume. As long as Turkey con continues with this behavior, which is criticized by Washington and Brussels, then we cannot be optimistic. If Turkey is prepared to start a serious dialogue with Greece about the uh, delimitation of maritime zones, then yes, this is Greece's position, but not at gunpoint. Uh, Matthew Breiser, what, what do you say to this? And, and how does this fit into Turkey's broader Middle East uh, policy and, and the danger that they, the, the perception they may be provoking things a little too much? Well, sitting here in Turkey, uh, I think the perspective is, as unusual as it may sound, <laughs> is that Turkey's foreign policy establishment believes it's playing defense rather than offense. Uh, but these tactics, of course, are an aggressive part of that defense. So, so uh, what do I mean? Uh, Turkey believes that it de-escalated back in the summer of 2020 after that naval collision that I mentioned. Uh, since then, Turkey has not sent any oil or gas exploration ships into the Mediterranean. In fact, it's been focused on the Black Sea, where it's had a pretty significant discovery of natural gas. Um, and President Erdogan thought that he and Greek Prime Minister uh, Mitsotakis had reached a, a gentleman's agreement whereby when the Prime Minister went to Washington, D.C., uh, in I guess it was in May, um, the Greek Prime Minister would not lobby against uh, uh, a pending agreement for Turkey to buy more U.S. F-16 fighter jets. Uh, from, from the United States. And it turns out while the prime minister was there in Washington, he did lobby against the agreement. And so that got Erdogan really angry. Uh, he made some belligerent statements saying, uh, Prime Minister Mitsotakis no longer uh, exists for me. Well, since then, Greece has placed some uh, weapons or, or military equipment, I should say, not weapons, uh, on some islands in the Aegean Sea that under an international agreement are not supposed to have military equipment on them. And so then Erdogan has countered that with these threatening statements about how Turkey has such a bigger military and, you know, Greece couldn't withstand the Turkish military. So we're getting in onto a, a, a dangerous escalatory ladder in, term, in terms of rhetoric. Uh, and I, I think it really is time for somebody to step in uh, as a neutral arbiter. It's difficult for the European Union to be neutral in this situation because under the European Union, there's a, there's a concept of solidarity among all member states. So if Greece is feeling threatened by Turkey, the rest of the EU needs to come to Greece's aid. So it's tough for the EU to broker this one. So maybe an individual EU member state, like Germany did last time, needs to step in. Yeah, this is something that George mentioned earlier, and I want to put that to Salah then. Is there uh, a basis then for uh, some sort of uh, international mediation via, via the EU or the UN to, to ultimately resolve this? Well, the, the, I think the uh, EU is definitely out. The... Uh... Why is the uh, EU the, out? The uh, UN is, uh, <laughs> as our friend, uh, uh, the former ambassador is suggesting, the EU is in cahoots with the Greeks. I mean, 
it cannot uh, uh, be a, a, an impartial uh, uh, facilitator. So, uh, and the, the, U, the, the UN, uh, I don't know about the UN. We have bad experience with the UN uh, so far in Libya. But I think uh, uh, probably a, th a third country, maybe uh, Germany or uh, uh, somebody at the US or somebody, uh, since the US has relations and a uh, member of NATO with uh, both Greece and uh, Turkey, maybe it can uh, do something about that. Uh, but but I, I, I hope they can uh, work it out because uh, in Libya, we need uh, uh, to explore uh, for oil and gas and uh, try to get things uh, moving. Our economy is suffering, and the uh, uh, the perspective, uh, the prospectus of uh, of uh, 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 increasing production is uh, much needed in Libya, and uh, we can't afford to get into this tit for tat with the Greeks and the Egyptians and so on. Uh, we need an agreement, and uh, we have enough problems of our own. Yeah, talk to us a little bit more about that, about how this deal, how you see this deal benefiting the Libyan people. Well, we, we, we need investments in the oil and gas uh, sector. Uh, the oil and gas sector has been uh, neglected for a, a long time. The uh, infrastructure is uh, uh, basically deteriorating. Uh, the shutdowns and so on, and uh, uh, not spending enough money on it. Uh, we also need uh, to increase our production to support the uh, government expenditures. Right now, we are uh, uh, spending uh, using uh, deficit uh, spending, and uh, uh, the uh, the income is very low uh, compared to the past. And Libya uh, is totally dependent on oil and gas. And I think uh, that there are markets for that, and we have to take advantage. And we need the investments, and the Turkish investment is certainly welcome, and, uh, as, uh, as well as any other investments. George Sogopoulos, how do you see this playing out then, particularly the longer that this, that this goes on without any, any sort of... Uh, any kind of resolving of it? Well, the European Union, uh, in my opinion, uh, can't play a role. And actually, uh, solidarity is a key pillar of how this family works, so this needs to be taken into account. Occasionally, Turkey might not be happy, very happy with this, but this is how this family is working. This is the modus operandi. And that's why President Erdogan will also join uh, the, the meeting of the European Political Cooperation in Prague. I think this is very important to mention. He wants to be there. He wants to cooperate. He wants to open new sectors of co collaboration despite the problem. And this is indicative of uh, how things could evolve in the future. But what needs to be taken into account is that Turkey needs to change its mindset and attitude in order to be part of the family, even of the European political community. And within this context, the European Union can perhaps push forward with the idea of a multilateral dialogue, because what we do have already is the regional cooperation among countries in the region, like Greece, Israel, uh, uh, the, and other sites like Egypt, Jordan, the Palestine Authority. Uh, Italy and France, Turkey is not there. Turkey can be there if it respects the rule of the majority. This is the key question for Turkey and a question that the Turkish government needs to, to answer itself. All right. On that, we are going to have to leave it. We are out of time. Thanks very much to all three of you. Salah El Bakush in Tripoli, George Zagopoulos in Athens and Matthew Breiser in Istanbul. Thanks very much for being on Inside Story. And thank you, as always, for watching. Remember, you can see this program again anytime. Just go to our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, there's our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Seeker, and the entire team here, bye for now.